Well, most of Parliament has fled. Justin Trudeau is in hiding. Who knows if he's even in the country? He's probably in the Bahamas. But one of the MPs who's here today, walking around talking to people, is our friend Leslin Lewis, the Conservative Member of Parliament from Haldeman, Norfolk. What a pleasure to have you. Nice to be here. Nice to see you again, Ezra. Well, likewise. Did I say the name of your riding correctly? You sure did. Okay, well, that's great. Um, the first thing I want to say is, why are you here? Other MPs have chosen to avoid it, even to criticize it. Why did you decide to come? I think any time the, spe the people have spoken, that it's our obligation to listen to the people who pay our salaries. So I think it's very important that we're here, that we listen to the concerns, that we meet them, and that we hear what's on their hearts. One of the things that the establishment has said about the convoy is that it's immoral in some way. It's either racist or sexist, extremist or violent. Uh, what are your observations? Well, that's what they say to keep good people away because good people wouldn't want to be associated with those labels. So they throw out those labels so that people will be afraid to stand up for their democratic rights. What I've seen, I've seen family members, I've seen young children, I've seen people picking up garbage so that they don't have, so that the city doesn't have to come and do it. I've seen people bringing latrines so that they could have a place to use the washroom. I've seen people by the side of the road making food for strangers. I've seen brother and sister love and I've seen people fight for their democracy and I've seen people stand up and tell the government that they've gone too far and that is their democratic right to do so. In the background uh, you can hear the uh, drumming of indigenous drums. There has been a large Aboriginal contingent here. Even the organizer of the convoy herself is a Métis woman. Uh, you use the word unity. I feel that too. Do you think there's almost a new political coalition that's being fused here? Because there's people here who have never been political before, uh, who probably would have voted for Justin Trudeau in 2015. Is something new taking shape here? Oh, absolutely. This transcends partisan politics. This is about freedoms. This is about uh, choice. This is about your rights. And when governments use hate to divide, the people start to see through it. And once their eyes are open, it's never closed again. And so people don't care what party you belong to. People don't care whether you're conservative or liberal. All they know is that they've done what's right. Many people have are double and triple vaccinated here and they're still under lockdowns. And so that so their their eyes are opening and they're saying there's something wrong with the mandate. The mandates don't work. We're tired. We want conversation and politicians are running from the same people that they were elected to represent. That is not right. I, I agree with those things. I feel, and I want to be very candid with you, I feel that the Conservative Party federally and in the provinces where it's in power, Ontario and Alberta come to mind, provincially those governments have imposed mandates. In fact, in my original province of Alberta, they've even locked up pastors who keep their churches open uh, in the face of the lockdown. I have felt like the Conservative Party federally was reluctant to take that head on. But I feel like in the last few days, this convoy has given courage to Conservative MPs, uh, a number of whom have come out. What do you think of my analysis? Well... Our leader, Aaron O'Toole, has always st uh, stood up and said that we believe in reasonable accommodations. And so that's always been a part of our platform. With respect to the provincial side, we don't have any control over provincial mandates. The federal side, yes, I've, I've spoken out and I've said it is wrong that a Canadian cannot get on a plane, cannot get on a boat, cannot get on a train that is federally regulated because Justin Trudeau has spread this rumor that unvaccinated people People are now that we're two years into this into this pandemic and we know that covid is now in and so we're at the point now we where we say we have to learn to live with it and you're not going to get COVID by sitting beside an unvaccinated person who doesn't have COVID. And so that was a lie. And the people have woken up and they've seen that they've been lied to and they want answers and they deserve those answers. 
One of the things for the last, it's, it's ironic in a way that we're in front of Parliament Hill, uh, or on Parliament Hill, because so many of the decisions of the last, last two years have not been made by parliamentarians. Many of the particular rules have not been voted on. They've been issued by public health officers, provincially, at the city level, and even Theresa Tam federally. Um, do you think it's time to remove the emergency powers from the public health, I call it the deep state, because no one voted them in. No one heard their names until two years ago, and they, they become powerful political actors. Is it time to take the democracy back from public health officers and put it into legislatures again? Absolutely, we know it's time, because medical officers of health around the country are saying that it's time. They're coming out and saying that it's time for us to move on. It's time for us to learn how to be safe and healthy and live with COVID. And it's time to restore the freedoms. And today is indicative of the fact that it's time. I got one last question for you. And by the way, I appreciate, I know there's so many people here you want to talk to. Thanks for making time for us. Justin Trudeau has announced that he has purchased or signed contracts um, for hundreds of millions more doses. I think he said 400 million or some enormous figure. And uh, I know the government has plans to acquire them for years to come. Uh, I suppose he would say, well, that's just, you know, better safe than sorry. It's like an insurance policy. Are you worried that two boost, two shots and a booster will turn into four, five, six, as like in Israel, they're on shot number four, starting shot number five. Do you think that that we should reassess this endless plan for a series of boosters. Do you feel comfortable taking on that issue? Well, I'm not a medical doctor. My doctorate is in, is in law, so yeah. I am comfortable talking about rights. Yeah. And my issue is that I believe that even if the whole world is vaccinated, it should be done on informed consent. Right. I believe in informed consent. So my issue here is not about whether you're vaccinated or you're not vaccinated because yeah. the group of people here are comprised of people who are no longer afraid of each other. They're both yeah. vaccinated and unvaccinated. So I'm here because I want to hear for, from people about the mandates and the mandates that have caused families to be apart, that have caused brothers and sisters not to want to see each other, parents not want to see their children, grandparents not want to see their grandchildren. These are the things that we need healing for in this country. And I would like to move us forward in a spirit of unity. There you have it, Leslie Lewis, Member of Parliament for Haldeman, Norfolk. Pleasure to talk with you. Thanks for being here. Pleasure. Right on. Stay warm. Okay, you too. Stay with us. More ahead. That's an excerpt from my daily show, The Ezra Levant Show. Every day I do a monologue on the news of the day, then I interview an interesting guest, and then I read my hate mail. You gotta subscribe. Go to rebelnews.com.